Welcome to Timekeeping. This show will attempt to chronicle year-by-year -year changes to the Walt Disney World Resort, from exciting new ride openings to the minutia of a store changing names. Join us as we count down to the 50th anniversary of the vacation kingdom of the world. Like the rest of the nation after the Watergate scandal and the gas crisis, Walt Disney World entered 1975 a different place than it had been at the beginning of 1974. And we're not just talking about attraction openings, but the events of 1973-74 changed the company's plans and outlook for the future. What can really be described as phase one would be complete, not quite as planned, and then what the resort would become would start to blast off. On January 15th, the Carousel of Progress and Space Mountain opened with grand fanfare. A 2,000-member band, 50,000 balloons, a pageant of nations, and a Dove release, along with astronauts Scott Carpenter, Gordon Cooper, and Jim Irwin, dedicated the roller coaster. In 1964, Walt first approached designer John Hench with his idea for an attraction that would be the focal point of a renovated Tomorrowland planned for 1967. His quote-unquote spaceport would include a roller coaster-style ride in the dark, with lighting and other special effects. Originally called Space Voyage, the attraction concept continued to be refined over the years by Wet Enterprises. Walt Disney's death in December 1966 and the new emphasis on preparing for the newly announced Disney World project forced Wed to put aside the design of Space Mountain indefinitely. The Magic Kingdom's early success and its unexpected popularity with teens and young adults prompted Wed to begin planning thrill rides for the new park shortly after its opening in 1971. A new Matterhorn bobsleds attraction was considered, but it wouldn't fit in Florida's Fantasyland. Ultimately, designers returned to designing Space Mountain. The Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland had the right amount of available land, and computing technology had improved significantly since the initial design phases. That being said, the computers didn't end up working out, and the two-track roller coaster was designed by hand anyway. The ride opened sponsored by RCA, and the exit would take you through the home of future living, highlighting how RCA products would shape future homes. Right next door to Space Mountain, on the other side of the Skyway Station, the new version of the Carousel of Progress opened the same day. Having been removed from Disneyland nearly two years earlier, this version of the attraction not only updated the final scene to be more contemporary with 1975, it also changed the theme tune to the new Sherman Brothers song, The Best Time of Your Life, by a request from the attraction's continued sponsor, General Electric. This was to promote guests to buy appliances now, rather than to wait for a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Having the home of future living less than a football field away probably didn't hurt that line of thinking. However, notably the fourth scene seems to focus on society's progress, not technologies, and was set on New Year's Eve, cutting to a Walt Disney World New Year's Eve celebration at the same time. On March 15th, the Circle Vision 360 film America the Beautiful returned with new footage for the American Bicentennial. Across the way, Flight to the Moon reopened as Mission to Mars on June 7th, following its Disneyland counterpart in March. The new attraction varied little other than the film and pre-show content. Rounding out Tomorrowland, the Wedway People Mover opened on July 1st, utilizing the balconies and tunnels that had been in place since 1971. This version of the ride was sponsored by the Edison Electric Institute and narrated by Jack Wagner. What can be considered the birth of the modern Walt Disney World Parade debuted on June 14th on both coasts. America on Parade would run well into 1976 and featured both traditional Disney characters and historical figures. The parade was based around eight foot tall People of America figures, which are basically large figurines from It's a Small World turned into character costumes. The parade also featured several elaborate floats depicting moments and icons in American history, such as the Liberty Bell, the first Thanksgiving, and the Statue of Liberty. My personal favorite, the giant sandwich. Little happened at the resorts. The Grand Canyon Terrace Cafe switched from table service to cafeteria style at some point in the beginning of the year and took the name the Terrace Buffeteria. The Polynesian saw refurbishments at the South Seas Room and the Monorail Station where the ticket booth was removed. The Walt Disney World Village hosted two events for the first time in 1975 the Festival of the Masters and an art festival, and the glory and pageantry of Christmas as a kind of nativity show for the holidays. By the end of 1975, the Magic Kingdom would be in a state that would remain nearly unchanged for the rest of the decade, and the resorts were also cementing in the offerings for years to come. Walt Disney World also had its first original attraction that would begin to travel the world over as a staple of all castle parks. 
Attendance had risen 15 percent to over 12 million guests in fiscal year 75, recovering from the losses suffered during the gas crisis. In the years to come, the focus would be on providing options beyond the Magic Kingdom to keep guests entertained and to truly make it the vacation kingdom of the world. Well, time flies. Enjoying your jump from time to time with us? Please hit the like button and subscribe to support this show and others. You can also join the WDWNT Inner Globe Society for exclusive content at patreon.com slash WDWNT. If you're looking for the perfect gear to celebrate 50 years of Walt Disney World, you can shop for apparel, accessories, and more at carouselaproducts.com. We'll see you real soon right here on Timekeeping.